Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examinations. I am Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2C1, which we've called Resistance and Ohm's Law. So starting at foundation level. In syllabus item 2A2, we stated that the resistance is the opposition to current flow and explored the concepts of conductors and insulators. Anything that is not a perfect conductor exhibits resistance. While the best electrical conductors, silver, copper, gold, etc., exhibit a very small amount of resistance at room temperature, it can still be a factor in the design of electrical and electronic devices where resistance is undesirable. In electronics, resistance is often a useful tool with which to produce results. You can use a resistor to limit the current to an LED or to bias a bipolar junction transistor, but more on that later. Materials like nickel chromium alloy, which is used in wire wound resistors and carbon, which is used in carbon composition resistors, exhibit significant opposition to current flow which allow them to be readily fashioned into resistors. The unit of resistance is the ohm, named after Georg Simon Ohm, and the symbol is the Greek letter omega. Unlike units which use the first letter or letter combinations from the scientist's name, for example, Watt, W and Hertz, HZ, the ohm uses the Greek letter omega as the letter O is too similar to a zero. The schematic in the graphic shows a controlled voltage source driving a current through a variable resistor. The greater the PD or electrical pressure generated by the voltage source, the greater the current flowing around the circuit. Conversely, the greater the resistance value, the less the current flowing around the circuit. Note the symbols for controlled voltage source and variable resistor are not required for the foundation exam. The relationship between voltage, current and resistance is given by Ohm's law. I equals V over R, where I is the current in amps, A, V is the voltage in volts, V, and R is the resistance in ohms. Just as with the power formula, we need to be able to change the subject of the formula to put either I, V or R on the left hand side of the equal sign. Again, we can use the triangle to give us all three forms of the formula. I equals V over R, V equals I times R, and R equals V divided by I. Here's a study tip for you. Memorize each form of Ohm's law formula to save time in the exam. From Ohm's law, we can see that if there is a voltage across equal value resistors that are in parallel, the current through each resistor will be the same. The graphic shows a simple circuit with two parallel resistors of equal value, one ohm. As the voltage across each resistor is Vs, two volts, we can calculate the current through each resistor. I1 equals Vs divided by R1 equals 2 divided by 1 equals 2 amps. And the same for I2 as you might expect. And Kirchhoff's current law and indeed the water analogy tell us that the two currents combine to give a current again of 4 amps. Resistance is a property of a material that opposes the flow of electricity. The unit of resistance is the ohm. The current I amps through a resistor R ohms is proportional to the voltage V across that resistor. You should be able to use Ohm's law to calculate the value of any one of the three quantities, voltage V, current I and resistance R, given the other two. Remember that where a supply feeds more than one component or device, 
The total current is the sum of the currents of the individual items when connected in parallel. This is Kirchhoff's current law. Moving on to intermediate license level. At foundation license level in video 2A2, we looked at the water analogy as a mechanism to visualize electricity in a circuit. This graphic extends that analogy to see what happens if we connect two resistors in parallel. The pinch points R1 and R2 provide opposition to the current flow. The opposition is less than if there were only one pinch point. If the cross-sectional areas of the pinch points is equal, then the combined opposition to water flow is half what it would be with just one pinch point. Estimating equivalent resistance. Estimating the equivalent resistance of resistors in parallel is a really useful skill to develop, as it often means you don't need to reach for the calculator. Don't use a calculator to answer the questions that are coming up now. Let's do a question. Two 30 ohm resistors are in parallel. What is the combined resistance? Back to the water analogy. If the electrons have two equal pipes to flow through, the resistance to their passage is halved. So 15 ohms is the equivalent resistance. Next question. Three 15 kilo ohm resistors are in parallel. What is the combined resistance? Again, if the electrons have three equal pipes to flow through, the resistance to their passage is only a third of what one pipe would present. So the answer is five kilo ohms. Now a trickier question. Three resistors, five ohms, six ohms and seven ohms are in parallel. Is the combined resistance closest to A, 4 ohms, B, 2 ohms, or C, 6 ohms? Well, the answer has to be less than any of the individual resistors because using the water analogy, adding smaller pipes in parallel to a larger pipe will only reduce the resistance to a value lower than the larger pipe. So choice C is not a solution. Both A and B are still possibilities. So we can further estimate the answer like this. We estimate the combined resistance of the six ohms and seven ohms to be slightly more than six ohm, uh, two six ohm resistors in parallel, but slightly less than two seven ohm resistors in parallel. Say an equivalent resistance of about 3.2 ohms. We now consider the, uh, this equivalent 3.2 ohm resistor in parallel with the remaining five ohm resistor. If two 3.2 ohm resistors were in parallel, then the resistance or the, the equivalent resistance would be about 1.6 ohms. So it's going to be slightly more than that, but it's going to be less than the equivalent of two 5 ohm resistors in parallel, two and a half ohms. So the only fit is answer B. The exact answer, by the way, is 1.96 ohms. In these examples, the resistors have all been of the same order of magnitude. What about when one resistor has a much greater value than the other? Let's do a question. A 5 ohm resistor is in parallel with a 5 kilo ohm resistor. Is the combined resistance closest to A, 5 ohms, B, 4 ohms, or C, 5 kilo ohms? Here we have a high value resistor shunting or bypassing a low value one. The high value resistor, five kilo ohms or 5,000 ohms, provides a thousand times more opposition to current flow than the five ohm resistor. Again, using the water analogy, a main stream has been bypassed by a trickle, which will have little effect on the total flow, certainly not to increase the flow by a fifth. So the answer is choice A. The exact answer, by the way, is 4.95 ohms, pretty much five ohms. So summarizing, if you have two 
or uh, more resistors in parallel, the combined or equivalent resistance is less than any of the individual resistors. If two resistors are of equal value, then the equivalent resistance is half of that of either resistor. Two 10 ohm resistors in parallel have an equivalent resistance of 5 ohms. Use these facts to estimate and as a sanity check when, uh, when performing calculations. At intermediate level, we are required to be able to calculate the equivalent resistance of two or three resistors in series or series parallel. Now we can estimate the equivalent resistance, we will look at calculating it exactly. So calculating resistors in parallel. At foundation level, we looked at Ohm's law formula V equals I times R and used the triangle to transpose the formula so that given the values for any two of the variables, we can solve for the third. This syllabus requirement is repeated at intermediate level. But instead of a single resistor, we'll be called upon to use the equivalent resistance of two or three resistors arranged in series or parallel or series parallel. In many cases, we can simply use the estimation method given above, but sometimes the multiple choice options are too close together in value for us to reliably pick the right answer. And in this case, we have to use the formula. EX308, supplied in the exam, uses the term RT to signify total resistance, which is essentially the same as equivalent resistance. The general formula for resistors in parallel is shown here. The dots and final term indicate that you can simply add on as many new terms as you have additional resistors. A very common mistake when using this reciprocal formula is to evaluate the right-hand side of the formula and think that you have arrived at the answer, when in fact you have evaluated 1 over RT, in other words, the reciprocal of RT. A further calculator keystroke, the 1 over X button, is needed to get to the final answer. Estimating the value will provide a useful sanity check. Uh, and perhaps remind you that this final keystroke is required. Uh, the graphic shown shows some of the combinations of resistors uh, and the formula, formulas needed to evaluate the equivalent resistance. You should not attempt to memorize these, rather understand the underlying logic uh, and be able to construct them on the fly. The reciprocal form for RC is given just to illustrate that you can have RT as the subject of the formula rather than 1 over RT, if you like. The intermediate syllabus states, calculate the combined resistance of two or three resistors in series and or parallel. So apart from two or three resistors in series, where you just add the values, or just two resistors in parallel, this covers all the possibilities. Practice calculating the combined resistance of two or three resistors in series, parallel, series, parallel combinations. Be able to enter the values that have prefixes milli and kilo into your calculator. Look at the instructional videos for the TI30 calculator on this channel for some examples. Learn to estimate combinations of series and parallel uh, equivalents equivalent resistances without using a calculator, and then double check with a calculator. You will be surprised at how accurate your estimations will be. In the next video, 2C2, we look at potential dividers at foundation and intermediate levels. So that concludes syllabus item 2C1, Resistance and Ohm's Law. Thank you for watching.